Jay Williams and Jay Bella. So I know you get asked this question every year. I mean, they're booing you, even though I think you have publicly expressed your affection for North Carolina oh, recently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what is this? I knew you would find a way to get that in. I, knew I decided it. not to be quite so overt. <laughs> What, what is it about this rivalry that brings out this type of passion that we see here and that we see on the floor? I think it's, for, for me as a former player, and this is my player hat, it's inescapable. You know, when we're in Durham, we have so many Carolina fans that work in Durham, that live in Durham, that chide us, that talk trash to us, and vice versa. And as a player, RD, it's safe to say, I am a petty individual. People have been known to call me Petty LaBelle, okay? <laughs> because I remember things that were done to me in third grade. And I think this rivalry has gone to a different level because as a former player or a guy like Jeremy Roach on the Duke side or a guy like Filipowski who remembers it, we were in the building when they lost to UNC on Coach K's last home game. I was there at the Final Four when they beat Duke and Coach K's last game, those are, last, those are Coach K's two last losses. And I think it heightens this rivalry to an even another degree considering both teams are now in the top 10. It's a rivalry that doesn't need explaining. We're trying to explain it. It doesn't need explaining. All you have to do is say Duke, Carolina, and everybody goes, I, I want to see that. It's excellence versus excellence. There have, you know, look at all the banners in, in both stadiums. Like, they're, they're national championship good, and they're competing for national championships more often than not. And look, we said this, the game always delivers. All the Hall of Fame players, Hall of Fame coaches, it's excellence versus excellence. Every rivalry is the same to the participants. Xavier Cincinnati's no different in intensity. But the people outside the rivalry that flock to this game because they know it's going to deliver, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And from, from a player-coach perspective, you're honored to play in this game, and you're measured as a player or coach by how you perform in this game more than any other. As, as it's been said, if you understand, no words are necessary. If you don't, no words will suffice. <laughs> Today's meeting is the first with both teams in the top ten, both ranked first in the last ten, which both have been ranked nine consecutive meetings in which one or both teams unranked prior to this one. That was tied for the longest streak since 1980-84. Now think about that. That gives you the connotation of excellence. But above and beyond, 49th time, they're both in the top 10. That's over three times as many as the next closest rivalry. And of course, they're split 24-24 and separated by about a point. Now Duke is trying to become the team to win three straight in Chapel Hill for the first time since they won four in a row across the turn of the century. John Shire could join Jerry Gerard as the only two coach to win his first two games in North Carolina. Just off the top of your head, can you name the last North Carolina coach to lose his first three home games to the Blue Devils? Matt Doherty? Mm -mm. Roy Williams? No. no idea. His name is on the court, or, or is in on the building, I should wow. say. Dean, Dean Smith. Smith. Wow. How about that? And that's what Hubert he figured, he figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out <laughs> right there. A little bit later on. Now, this game tonight, what are you looking for? I think it all starts and ends with North Carolina's defense. You know, North Carolina lost to both UConn and Kentucky back to back and gave up 87 points in each of those two games. Since that Kentucky loss, Carolina's giving up only 64 points per game. They're the best defensive team in the ACC. They're one of the top three or four defensive teams in the country. It wasn't a, a flip of a switch. I don't know exactly what it, but this is a stingy defensive team. And they have to run Duke off the three-point line. Duke's an excellent shooting team. And make their smaller guards finish in the lane and make tough twos without fouling over Carolina's size. And Carolina's a very good defensive rebounding team. Limit Duke to one challenged tough two. And I think North Carolina's got an excellent chance to win the game. That sounds easier to say than done, though. Yep. I mean, when I think about this new team, I think about versatility. I think about five guys having a double figure. I think about five guys shooting between 37 and 47 from the three-point line. That shot-making ability creates space. That spacing, right, makes this team very hard to play against. Right there, Tyrus Proctor, he tries to get a piece of the paint. Phil Powell comes behind. He's going to chase it. The whole idea of a ball screen is to make two plays. See three players outside the three-point line. Phil Powski at 7-1 is a playmaker now. Four and three behind. Great cut by Mark Mitchell. Mitchell's one of the best cutters in college basketball. There's an easy finish. 
Just a simple two-man game with Phil Powski and Proctor. Proctor so he can get downhill, be aggressive. He'll pull this thing back as the hedge defender leaves. He gets to the paint. What does that do? It forces help. Three guys outside the three-point line. Kick out to the corner. Roche knocks down that three. It's the versatility of this Duke offense that makes it so hard to defend, and that will be the challenge for North Carolina today. And that's a great point. But the one thing you notice from the tape you chose, zero pressure on the ball from yep. Virginia Tech in those two sequences. And that's what North Carolina has to change. They got to impact the ball defensively and push Duke a little further out on the floor. And, and that last player in that breakdown was Jeremy Roach as he was running off the, off the court. That's who my eye is going to be on in this game is the point guards. In such a heated rivalry when there's emotions involved, how do you control your team? How do you control pace? I'm looking at Jeremy Roach and RJ Davis. Jeremy Roach, not high volume, but he is high impact. I think he's going to be huge. He was huge in their win against Baylor when he had 18 points. He has to be able to step up, control pace, run the team, and facilitate. I think if Duke is learning anything from the way Georgia Tech played R.J. Davis, and he had 30, but he struggled a little bit in the first half, I think you'll see doses of Tyrese Proctor on R.J. Davis because of his yeah. size and his length yes. and play off him. And then you'll see Jeremy Roach on Elliott Kendo, the veteran versus the freshman. The one matchup that nobody's really going to talk about that I'm most excited to see tonight are like the Batmans of the team. And that's Mark Mitchell against Harrison Ingram. Let me talk about two dudes that do all the dirty work, that live in the trenches, live in the mud, like the way they muck up the game. Mark Mitchell's game has become a lot more simplistic. And Harrison, Bar Harrison Barnes, I mean, Harrison Ingram, it's another North Carolina great. Shooting the ball from the three-point line, but can switch one through five. Their impact on the game defensively to make plays, I think, ultimately will determine the win.